You have one ticket that knows what a woman is and has vowed to take decisive action in protecting our sex-based rights compared to the other ticket that thinks men can become pregnant and that tampons belong in boys' bathrooms. I see on social media people saying they're voting for Kamala Harris because she's a woman. Well, guess what? I am voting for Donald J. Trump because I am a woman. Riley Gaines issuing a warning to voters who say they are supporting Kamala Harris just because she's a female candidate, claiming the Democratic Party is anything but pro-woman. Outkick.com contributor and host of the Gaines for Girls podcast, Riley Gaines joins us now. Riley, always so great to have you on. So you were at the, the rally and you're making the case. I mean, the Democrats try to pretend like they own women. They're the party for women. And what's your case for why that's not the case? Absolutely. Well, thank you, guys. Always a joy to be on with you. Uh, this is coming off the heels of the DNC. We heard it from virtually every single speaker at the DNC. They talked about uh, they are the party of and for women. They talked about a woman's right to, to dismember and abort the developing child in her womb. They used the, the phrase, my body, my choice. Uh, they spoke of health care freedom. Uh, where was this health care freedom in 2020? Um, this was not implemented, this bodily autonomy they spoke of. That didn't matter when it came to injecting yourself with an experimental, ineffective vaccine that has zero credibility. No, the Democratic Party, they were the tyrants who fired healthcare workers. They fired school teachers, active duty military members for not conforming with their autocratic mandates. Uh, and so my message to, to voters, uh, regardless of political affiliation, regardless of of race, of religion, of, of sexual orientation, of, of any identity factor. My message to voters is that a vote for Kamala Harris is a vote against your daughter's future. Uh, we see, of course, the issue that I speak most frequently of, the gender ideology movement. Uh, we see how this movement preys on the most vulnerable, that being women and children. It's stripping away our rights to safety, our rights to privacy, our rights to equal opportunity. But it's also important to mention that just this week, we saw uh, in Afghanistan, the Taliban implemented a law, the most oppressive law for women that we've seen thus far. Women aren't allowed to speak. They're not allowed to show any skin. They're not allowed to leave their house without a male chaperone. They're not allowed to even look at a man they are not related to or married to. Yet have we seen a statement issued by the White House? No, of course not. Women want a safe border. Women want a good and stable economy. And none of those things have been, uh, we have seen from the Democratic Party thus far and we won't in the next four years if they maintain leadership. Riley, what does it say to you? Look, the strongest demographic uh, group in voting for Kamala Harris and voting for Democrats is single young women. That, that is their overwhelming strongest group. Now, you know, we can, we can go into why, like, abortion is often a big issue um, with, that, with that group, uh, even though Donald Trump has said he's not looking for a national abortion ban. It just, it pulls people in one direction. Kamala Harris is a female candidate, so a lot of people want to rally around a female candidate. Do you think any of the things you're laying out to us, and you're young, um, I mean, does anything that you're laying out you think is breaking through with that group, that single young women who are so reliable for Democrats? I think so. Uh, I think people my age, you know, just recently graduating college, we're getting out into the real world and we're seeing the effects of progressive policies. Again, forget the gender ideology movement. Look at um, how much groceries cost, how much gas costs, how much rent, how much your mortgage, that, how much all that costs. So I think when you're getting out into the real world, people my age begin to understand, again, the harm and the severity, the trajectory of where we're going if we vote for this same leadership again. Uh, unfortunately, it takes time, it takes learning, it takes being exposed to, to tragic scenarios like what happened to me, like what happened to Lake and Riley at the border. Again, all of this is because of the Biden-Harris administration, and you can expect it to continue under the Harris-Waltz administration. Real quick, Riley, are we doing enough? Again, you're, you're significantly younger than us. Are we doing enough to reach those young people where they're at with the technologies they engage with news on? Well, this is what the Democratic Party does so well. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been super enthusiastic to see Donald Trump appearing on Theo Vaughn's podcast. He's joining Sean Ryan's podcast. Um, I think all of those things are wonderful. It's a great way to reach my demographic. He's now on TikTok. Uh, again, it's just a good way to get people with, with my age, my youth, our eyes on the issues at hand, 
Uh, and we see Donald Trump is a real person. That was what was awesome uh, at the RNC as well. I mean, there were many moments where Donald Trump was tearful. He was emotional. He was moved uh, to tears. We saw his grandchildren around him. It's all an effective way to, to get people my age, uh, pull on our heartstrings. Again, I think a page we can take from the Democratic play, playbook. Well, I think the Trump campaign is lucky to have you as a surrogate, Riley, and we love having you on. Thanks, Riley. Thanks, Riley. Thank you, guys. You got it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.